let's talk about cracked plugins. And before we move forward in this video, I've started giving out uh, online lessons. So if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one online lesson with me about mixing and mastering music production, or you'd like to ask any kind of questions, uh, just hit me up and check the offer on my website. The link is in the description down below. So the first and the most important question is, why do we crack plugins? The first and one of the most common ones is, I can't afford it. The second one may be, I don't want to buy it because I'm not going to use it commercially. It's just for fun. And the third one, which is probably the most common one, is that I want to use the plugin, but I don't want to pay for it. And let's make things clear before we start this video. All of those circumstances is just simply stealing and you can't really deny it. You are taking something which is not yours, which you haven't paid for and you are just using it. The first real reason why you shouldn't be cracking plugins uh, is not going to jail or getting caught by the police or anything like that. The thing is you are getting yourself used to um, having lots of solutions, lots of different plugins lots of cool sounds and you start relying on them. You can't really do what you are doing right now without those cracked plugins. And there is a moment where you want to start working commercially. You want to start selling your music, selling your art. And think of this like being a taxi driver with a stolen car, making money, driving people all around the town in a stolen car. And that's how I'm seeing using cracked plugins you haven't paid for um, in any commercial circumstance. And if you want to stay illegal in that kind of situation, um, you have to start using free plugins. And here you are hitting the wall because most of the free plugins you are going to start using aren't really that good. They don't really have all the features, all the cool sounds you are used to. And this is my own story because before I started treating uh, music seriously, like I want to make money out of music, I used to crack a lot of plugins. And since I turned 18, which is like the formal adult age here in Poland, I just simply told myself, I can't steal if I want to make money out of it. It's, it's just way too stupid as you look at it from the taxi driver perspective. And I had a long way of looking for free solutions, free sounds, and eventually buying some of the plugins I've been uh, using illegally before. Okay, but let's say you are making music just for fun, uh, just for yourself uh, and you don't want to make any money out of it. Does it justify cracking plugins? In my opinion, not really, because you are still stealing the plugin. You are still getting something for free, which someone has made, has put his or her time into, and you are just simply taking it for free. Even if you are just uploading your music to SoundCloud, you know, just sharing it with people, um, it's still a kind of commercial use because eventually um, you will see an opportunity to make money out of your music. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but maybe in three years. And then everything you've been making so far um, is starting to become a commercial use. And the things you could do at this moment are uh, either start using free plugins, which is not really good because you will miss all the cool features and sounds, or buy the plugins you've been using so far, which would be probably really expensive. Okay, but what about a situation where someone is using correct plugins, he's making money out of his music, okay? Uh, just because he wants to make enough money to buy the plugins he's using. Of course, this approach is just a little better, but just a little, because it's still stealing the car, driving all around the town, and then going back to the person uh, you've stolen the car from and paying her uh, enough money for the stolen car. You gotta admit, this is just not right. I know there is a way of thinking that a digital product like a plugin or a piece of software is not equal to a physical product like a car, uh, which I'm using as an example in this video. But this way of thinking is just simply really, really stupid because um, people, uh, the company, a group of people actually has put a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of effort to make something happen. And most of the times, if it's not like a super high-priced brand like Native Instruments, for example, the price shouldn't really be an issue if you really want to get this plugin and if you really want to use it. And here we come to the next thing, which is the attitude towards cracked plugins. When I used to crack plugins, I used to crack a lot of plugins. I found a plugin I really liked, I've downloaded it from the internet, played with it for a few days, eventually couldn't really figure out everything I wanted to figure out from this plugin, and I just threw it away uh, into the abyss of my plugin folder. I feel like most of the producers who are cracking plugins 
uh, they don't really want to dig deeper into the plugins, read the instruction manual, which may sound stupid, but it's actually a really good idea, and dig deeper into the plugin so they know everything about it and they can use it properly. Because when you buy the plugin, you have some sort of motivation because you've actually invested some of your money, which you've been putting your time to earn, and now you have a product, you have a plugin, and when you look at this plugin, when you are using the plugin, you can feel the amount of time you had to spend to buy it. And it's actually a really, really important factor. I can't count how many times I've downloaded the plugin, which uh, I saw on the internet, I thought it's awesome. Then I played with it like for 15 minutes, I couldn't achieve the results uh, that I think I would be able to achieve. And I just threw it away, just simply threw it away. And actually I found myself in a moment where I had lots of commercial plugins, uh, of course, correct ones, and I couldn't really find any use for them because I didn't really put enough time to uh, learn how to use them. And here we come to the very last thing, which should be pretty logical. If you are paying for the plugin, you are supporting the developer. And it doesn't matter if it's native instruments, some sort of uh, super high priced and well-known brand, or it's a minor developer, which is just starting out. All of those guys need money to function properly. And now in 2021, there are lots of independent developers uh, that are just sprouting out of the soil. And some of them offer some really, really interesting stuff. I don't have anything particular in my mind right now, but you definitely know some lesser known developers. And sometimes the good thing is that they are so unknown that you cannot crack their plugins because there is no crack on the internet. So I hope you got the point about why cracking plugins is not the best idea and that the taxi driver uh, stealing the car kind of comparison um, just hit you right into your heart. And if some of you are using correct plugins right now, you have your DW opened um, under this video and there are some cracked plugins out here. Just don't delete everything just because of this video. Take your time, think about it, look for some free solutions. And trust me, there are lots of free, really, really decent plugins out here on the internet. If you want me to make a video about free plugins that I've been using in my uh, music producer journey, just let me know. I definitely have a few, let's say, hidden gems uh, for making uh, beats and stuff. Once again, if you need a personal one-on-one music production, mixing and mastering, or any kind of lesson, just hit me up. The offer and the pricing is on my website. My name is Dominic, you've been watching Vatsu Beats, and keep the good vibes alive.